if an object is rolling without slipping, like this. Or rotating about a fixed axis, like this. Then the object's rotational motion and translational motion of certain points on the object are related in certain ways. For example, when an object rotates through an angular displacement delta theta, the distance traveled by a point, that is, a distance r to the axis, is the length of this arc. We know that when the angle is in radians, the length of the arc equals to the radius times the angle. So the length of the arc, the distance traveled, equals to the radius r times the angle, the angular displacement. So this is the translational motion part, and this is the rotational motion part, and they are related in this way. Now if I divide by time on both sides, Distance traveled divided by time gives me speed. And the r is a constant. And when we divide the delta theta by the time, we get omega. So speed is r times the angular velocity. Now if I want a change in speed divided by change in time, I would be able to replace the speed with the r omega. R does not change when this thing rotates, so we can factor out the R, and what's left will be delta omega over delta t. The rate at which the speed changes is some sort of acceleration. Which kind of acceleration is responsible for the speed change? It's the tangential acceleration. And then equals to r, and of course, delta omega over delta t is alpha. As for the centripetal acceleration, it is still the same v squared over r. But of course, in this case, speed is r omega, so we can substitute v with r omega. And then we can cancel one of the r's, and this gives us r times omega squared. So we can see that for the translational motion, distance, speed, and, and the tangential acceleration, we can multiply the r by the angular values to get those. As for the centripetal acceleration, that is v squared over r, it is also r times omega squared. But remember, this is only true if the object is rolling without slipping or rotating about a fixed axis.